take a moment of silence so each of us can reflect on our own faith and its place in our work here today. of the school board. Okay, guidelines for board reorganization. ISB attorney says questions need to be called on the one time on procedure. Okay. This is the annual meeting to re reorganize the school board. I will now accept nominations for office of president. Do I have any nominations? Todd, I'll make a nomination. Okay. I'd like to nominate uh, Adam. Adam Heckman for president. Do I have a second? I'll second that nomination. Uh, Ryan, or Brian seconds that. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Move. All right. And I will now accept nominations for the office of secretary. I'll make the nominate Stan Miller for secretary. I'll second that. <laughs> well, if there's no further nominations, I will accept the motion to close the nominations. I'll make that motion to close that nomination. <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. Corporation treasurer typically 
those positions. Motion for Jessica McFarland to TBR. I make that motion to have Jeff to move the trade. And I'll second that. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. All right, I guess we'll uh, move right on to Spotlight in the Valley. I want to get one more to do here, and that is for the, uh, the, the dates, time, and place of the work. student recipients of the Rising Star Indiana Award. And uh, I'm asked Mr. Kripp if he would uh, to come tonight and speak uh, about the four students who have been recognized as Rising Stars. Sure. Um, you know, thanks for letting me be here, guys. We've got some really uh, good things to share with you tonight, some really exciting things. Uh, we have two of our four Rising Stars. Uh, I think the weather, I, I did let the kids know that they couldn't quite get here. That's okay tonight with everything. but. Uh, uh, because of your support for my membership into the Indiana School Principals Association, one thing that we get to do uh, every year is you get to nominate up to four juniors that have shown excellence in academics. And the idea is that each school that's in the, that has a principal that isn't a member a membership allows you to nominate uh, up to four students. So what we did at, uh, at the high school is we met as our leadership team and discussed that you know who we thought was the most deserving juniors that have done a great job in their academics um, give them an opportunity to go on a list with all the other uh, juniors that were nominated in the state uh, this list gets put forward to um, colleges and scholarships and really gives them a, a, a not only a nice thing to, to put on their applications but also some some very well um, deserved recognition um, for their hard work and efforts. Uh, this is certainly a, a, a big deal. It's an honor, and uh, I want to present, uh, uh, give you all four names, but certainly present you two of the four here tonight. Okay, so uh, also our school board <coughs> representative, we have Dylan Wood. Okay, uh, Dylan uh, was, was all, and all four were unanimous selections for sure. And we also have Elijah Holder here tonight. Okay, so these two fine young men will represent us, our, our junior class this year, as uh, the Indiana uh, All-Stars, which is a big deal. The other two nominees were uh, Shaley Shriver and Olivia Ellenwood. So we're really excited, and thank you guys very much for coming tonight. And I've got your uh, certificates. Uh, we can get them to you here before you leave. Okay. Would you guys mind sharing what maybe some of your future goals are uh, after high school? What is, what, what's your plans? <laughs> I really don't know. No, don't, don't know. <laughs> Eli, jump up and say something. Okay. <laughs> um, I plan on trying to go to Purdue's engineering program. We might have to pull this thing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Glad to hear that. Well, that's great. Good deal. Great. Thanks, awesome. guys. Congratulations. Yeah. Good deal. All right, we'll move on to recognition of the high school teachers, Aaron Eastgate, Christian Eckhoff, Naomi Ponce, and June Yazel. Very good. So i um, got more good news for you to share tonight, too. And we'll kind of split this up into in two groups. Um, 
Let's first start. We got uh, Mrs. Eckhoff, Kristen Eckhoff is here tonight. Can you stand up? Okay. Uh, Aaron couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, but these two ladies uh, just received uh, a very prestigious grant. Um, at University of Indy right now, they have something that's called the CELL program. CELL stands for the Center of Excellence in Learning and Leadership. And what they have is they have a grant, where a very, very competitive grant, where you have teachers and STEM teachers, science, technology, engineering, and math. And both uh, Kristen and Aaron are, are excellent math teachers. And what they want to do is they give you an opportunity that if you do get this, the, it's called the STEM Teach Grant 3. This is the third round for it. And what they'll do is if you, you get the grant, it allows you to go back uh, to college and earn your master's, right? And it's a grant, so the good news is they pay for it, right? That's a good deal. So, um, you know, this, this, is a, this is a super big deal because, you know, not only are we going to have two teachers that are going to have their work towards getting their master's and, and moving through, but they're also going to become dual credit. Um, and as I came to you, I remember the very first board meetings I came, one of our goals is to improve our dual credit offerings and, and to get teachers dual credit certified. Uh, so to have both Kristen and Aaron in mathematics uh, at Tippecanoe Valley High School is a huge deal. And I'm very, very thankful and appreciative for all their hard work and uh, very glad uh, that uh, Cell and University of Indy is going to be picking up the tab for them. So that's a big deal. So awesome. give them a give us a good one. And then the other part, I've got June Yazel here, just back from Hawaii. Notice the tan. <laughs> I'm jealous. You should have seen the picture she was sending us. But uh, no, uh, we're very, very glad. Uh, Mrs. Ponce couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but both uh, Mrs. Yazel and Mrs. Ponce uh, were just recently accepted into the ACP program through the Indiana University. ACP stands for Advanced College Project. Uh, and what it is also is another dual program. What is happening is uh, many universities, Indiana University right now, is, is trying to kick it in gear to how can they provide uh, opportunities for teachers that want to go back to school and get their dual credit certification. They're saying, okay, well, we'll let you teach dual credit, and then we'll help you along the way through the uh, Advanced College Placement Project. We currently have one or two other classes right now at the high school that are in the ACP program. That would be Mr. Walker's Senior English, and then Mr. Shriver has uh, ACP Political Science or, or Government. So this again, along with our dual credit in mathematics uh, and having this program, and then now we're going to add, uh, Mrs. Yeza will have ACP U.S. History, which will be a, a, a very nice addition. And then we will also have, Ms. Ponce will be able to teach ACP Spanish 2, 3, and 4, uh, which again just expands our dual credit program it is just a, a great opportunity for our kids to take advantage of and I really want to thank Mrs. Yazel for uh, taking the time and, and congratulate her and Mrs. Ponce for um, being, being a part of that program. It's, it's, not, it's, a, it's not an easy program to get in and it really expands our relationship with Indiana University. Okay, Mr. Holder. But uh, no, and, uh, the great thing about these classes too is that they are on the uh, core transfer library, which means every school has to take them. Uh, so this is this is really really good and really strengthens our our dual credit program. And so thanks to all these teachers, and it's just really <coughs> exciting to to build that uh, that that program at the high school. And so really thankful for Mrs. Yazel and Mrs. Etkoff for being here tonight. Thank you, Chad. We're going to move on to update on the alternative education program here at Burkett. Um, just to go through a few things to begin with, thank you for your time this evening. Um, our alternative program began in the fall of 2003 to help students who had fallen behind or had some difficulties in their educational experience. This is the 15th year of our alternative school. Um, we've had a lot of success throughout the years that we're very proud of including um, 310 graduates and 22 um, former graduates who went on to military service. Um, this year we have a group of students. We've served 44 students throughout the course of this year at different times, not all at one time, but at different times. Credit, there's criteria for why students are allowed in an alternative school. And in the breakdown this year, we had 52% of our students were here because they had fallen behind on their credits and uh, needed extra help. We had 12% who were here due to either pregnancy or um, health trouble or different things like that. 
9% um, of our students were here because they were sort of living on their own and had to work part of the day in order to make their ends meet. We had 18% of our students who were here due to alternative to expulsion. And then another 9% of our students came here in lieu of quitting school or um, had planned on quitting school had they not come here. So far, our results, we have 26 students who are still enrolled here and uh, 12 have um, completed all their credits that they need for graduation and we've had two expelled for misbehavior. Um, semester one, we've had um, over 200 credits earned, figured up to right around five um, credits per student. Um, students earned 1,132 units on the first semester, an average of 27.6 per student. Um, students do their work here at Burkitt using the Apex Learning System. That's an online learning system. Um, there's over 50 classes on that system. Um, that students can get all the requirements they need in order to earn their core 40 diplomas and um, however quickly they're able to master that material is how quickly they're able to move on. One thing we implemented, started to implement strongly last year was individual help time. We found a lot of students were um, needing that, some of the skills and um, know-how to understand what's going on and uh, we also found that investing time in each individual student helped to greatly motivate them to um, want to succeed. In the first quarter we spent <coughs> between myself, um, the teacher formerly known as Miss Woodward, now is Mrs. Shroff. She was married this um, break. Um, and a new, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dewey Gayhart. He was a graduate last year who came back and is helping to tutor students here at Burkett as a volunteer. Between the three of us, we had 6,800 minutes individually with students. That's one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one at our desk, and including also another 8,500 minutes in quarter two for a total of over 15,000 individual time minutes. Um, another thing that was Mr. Kripe brought in at the high school level and we also took on was a lot more time to spend on ECA preparation and I-STEP preparation. Um, students um, spend a chunk of period each day who need either math or English in a class to help get skills to help better them in those. Um, we do not have the I-STEP test scores in yet, but we do for math, excuse me, we do for the ECA in math. The average student who took that course went up 33 points on their test, and in the English portion they went up 45 points on, from their remediation. Last year we had a group of students who came to us and said they really like, like doing the work on the APEX but they're still struggling a lot on mathematics so we implemented an algebra class that was more like a traditional classroom with the students who had not passed algebra and things. And we used that same format this year. Instead of algebra though we have geometry and we had six students earn credit in that geometry class. Um, so far this year and uh, three others who have a few things to finish up in order to earn credit for that. Um, we also have a JAG program here at Burkett. J JAG stands for Jobs for American Graduates. Miss Tanya Bope is the director of that and it's through the Work One program at um, Kosciuszko County and we have several students who are active members in that as well. So students get a wide variety of experiences. Uh, Mr. Eck, not Mr. Eck, Mr. Ingbricht, a teacher at the high school, comes and meets with students who have jobs. We have several students who have jobs here at Burkett, and they um, are able to earn credit for those jobs because he teaches the work-based competencies that they need in order to get those um, credits, and that's a big help for students as well. I invited four students to come here tonight to celebrate what they've accomplished here at Burkett. Um, unfortunately, I don't see any of them in attendance, but I'll kind of give you some highlights of what they were able to do. First, we had Jason Anthony Schaefer. Um, Jason entered this year as a senior. He came to Burkett due to getting expelled from the high school and came here instead of missing the rest of his senior year, would go against our graduation rate and would go against his future. He was able to come here and, and continue school. He's a very intelligent, respectful student and was able to finish all the classes needed for his Core 40 diploma. 
Um, he still attends school here two days a week for the JAG program. Um, he will be competing in representing Burkett at the CDC district competition with his focus being on writing. CDC competition is like a competition that we do with area schools. They can win scholarships and different things like that. And his goal is to go on to college to study to become a radiation therapist. Um, next we had J.J. Holmes. J.J. came here last year as a junior because he was behind on credits and really struggled with his attendance. Um, he became a strong member here at Burkett and uh, really fit in well with the um, uh, online learning and one of the reasons was he's, he's a very shy and timid young man and um, he has trouble speaking out what he thinks sometimes and that really helped him. Um, currently JJ is still part of the JAG program and he works at Teal's Restaurants. Um, many of you have been there and uh, he helps to make the food and things so thank him. His attendance this year has been outstanding. At one point he had missed I think just a lot of school and it was really hurting his progress um, when he was at the high school but he's up to 96 percent attendance rate here this year. His goal down the road is to become a CNA and because he has a big heart for helping others. Uh, thirdly, we had Miranda Morrison Salas. This was her second year here at school. Um, she came here due to a pregnancy. She worked extremely hard to graduate and reach her goals. She had great attendance, attitude, and work ethic. She graduated halfway through the first semester this year. Uh, she was determined to build her life for her son, Miguel. Um, she was also a member of the JAG program, and they set her up with an internship at Zimmer Biomet, and she's worked her way up to, as a, to the position of an, an inspector, where she's currently employed. Eventually, she wants to continue her education and provide for her son down the road. And last but not least, we have Kyla Bartley. Kyla's been a student here for quite some time. She entered halfway through her 10th grade year. She was far behind on credits. Um, was really struggling to attend school and was considering dropping out. She worked hard to improve her attendance and really fit in well here at Burkett. Subjects, she had a lot of difficulty, but she was not afraid to get help when she needed it. This is her 13th year of school, and she has a lot to be proud of. She did finish all of her credits, and now she holds a job at Dollar General and is also a member of our student government. Um, I regret that none of those students are able to be here tonight, but um, I'm sure they'll be at the graduation because they're all pretty dependable usually. Uh, also, speaking of graduation, our Burkett graduation date is May 10th, 2018 in the historical gymnasium at 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you have that. Thank you, Micah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll move on to items from the visitors. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to speak to the board? No? Well, I guess we'll move on to approval of the consent agenda. <clears throat> Number one, approved minutes of the December 7th executive session. Number two, approved minutes of the December 11th regular meeting and executive session. Number three, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Nicole Dennis, instructional assistant at Mentone. Shaley Lewandowski, instructional assistant at Mentone. Kim Overmeyer, cook at Mentone. Shelly Finney, ECA treasurer at Akron. And Melinda Kruger, cook at Akron. Number four, approve the following extracurricular assignments. Amanda Medley, math team at Mentone. Wanda Ryman, math team at Mentone. Number five, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Sarah Davis, instructional assistant at Mentone. Marlo Hudson, instructional assistant at Akron. Chris Jones, instructional assistant at Mentone. Dan Thompson, <coughs> assistant track coach at the high school. Number six, accept the retirement of the following personnel. Brett Boggs, superintendent of the school corporation. Number seven, 
approve the termination of the following personnel. Tanya Quintana, custodian at Akron. Number eight, appointment of the corporation physician, Francisco Negros. Number nine, appointment of Ryan McFarland to the Akron Carnegie Public Library Board. Number 10, approve the overnight trip high school wrestling team to the semi-state tournament. Number 11, approve the overnight trip the high school wrestling team to the state tournament. Number 12, approve out-of-state field trip for the high school seniors. Number 13, approve the 2019 high school senior trip. And number 14, approve the, approve the conflict of interest statements for the following board members. Stan Miller, Todd Hoffman, Brian Murphy, and Adam Heckman. Gentlemen, is there anything that you would like to pull out for further discussion? Discussion? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Stan agenda, is right? And I'll second that. All in favor, raise your right hand, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And I think you want to say something about Brett and uh, you know, his retirement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if Brett wants anything to say. You know, I think we appreciate the years of service that Brett's put forth for Valley, and I think um, you know he's, he's going to be missed. And, and you know, it's just something that I can give Brett a chance to speak if he wants to or say something. Can't put you on the spot. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, no, that's. Um, it's been an honor to serve Tiffany Valley for for 40 years. This is home. This this room was my fifth grade, fourth grade classroom as an elementary student. So uh, it's been a great place to be as a student and uh, as a teacher and a coach and administrator. I really appreciate it here. So I would like to thank the board for the opportunity that you've given me over the years and all the kids and, and the parents and the community folks have had a chance to work with. It's, it's just been an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, business items, approval of claims and payroll. Okay. Now we have one pre rent claim listing this evening, and it's dated December 30, 30, 31, 2017, in the amount of $2,989,389.81. And then our regular claim listing is dated January 15, 2018. 2018 is in the amount of $145,298.59. And we have two payrolls this evening. Uh, the first is dated December 8, 2017, in the amount of $430,667.52. And the second is dated November 24, 2017, in the amount of $478,000. $928.26. I would submit these claims for payroll for your approval. Gentlemen, do I have a motion for claims for payroll? I'll make that motion. Ready. Todd makes that motion. I'll second. Stand in seconds. All in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Move on to financial report. Okay. Um, the board has been provided with the Reconciled bank statement and the monthly financial report of funds for the month of January 2017. So, in summary, our receipts and our disbursements for December of uh, 2017 are full receipts for all funds $5,459,380.27, and the total receipts for all funds $4,159,755.57. Move on to old business. Update on the Akron Elementary School project. Good evening. Well, congratulations, Mr. Fox. Uh, good for you. I'm happy. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you throughout the course when I started working on the project. We've got a little bit more work to do. Um, last month, we, we guys were on Christmas break, so that allowed us to get a part of the work done in some areas, uh, cafeteria. All the flooring got installed in there. We were able to take down some of the temporary partitions in that area. <coughs> um, gym, the wood floors finished. Um, a final coat of sealer or finished coat went on Friday. 
Uh, we have the vent, the cone base to put around the perimeter still, wall padding, and bleachers. Uh, that'll all start on Monday. They, let that, they wanted that floor to cure about a week before you start putting some heavier equipment on there. So that, that'll take place Monday, and it should be done by the end of the week. <coughs> and our school should be able to start utilizing that gym on the following Monday. So uh, the locker rooms are off to the gym, are all finished. Uh, the cleaning crew will be in there tomorrow, get to those clean. Same thing, there's a couple of public restrooms right off the side of the cafeteria, those are all finished. Uh, cleaning crews in there today and got those clean. And we had about five classrooms left on that far uh, west side of the building. Those are all finished and they're being cleaned right they, they were clean today. So tomorrow we'll be back to uh, a little bit more clean up. There's uh, the two restrooms that we had to rework over there in the existing building. Uh, those are all finished and those will be clean tomorrow. So what we'll be down to is uh, doing the hallway carpet on that west side and then there's a workroom just on the, in the middle court and then the media center which is uh, going to be starting out there probably Thursday. So by the end of Middle of that, middle end of next week, the classroom will be the center, and all the big work will be done. Uh, we'll be going through doing walkthroughs, doing punch lists, checking on a few things, making sure everything's touch up, okay, if it's documented or not, missing, whatever's missing. So the guys will still be in and out, you know, as things they become available for them to fix or to take care of. But we're trying to get most of that done by the end of the month, so that way, come you know, February. Uh, there's going to be some things outside. We could get to a little bit of the landscaping and the weather. And then in the playground area, the temperature's got us. And that's like a rubber mulch, so we could really get that put down. So that'll probably, hopefully, we get a warm spell maybe in late February or March. Maybe the last few weeks. Any questions? Or? So the school on the inside will be done by the end of this month, then? Oh, yeah. It should be done well. We'll say January 26th. So we'll have a, a week for you in a month, roughly. Um, and we had a few pickups. Not gonna be, you know, some of that stuff. We got into that locker room area. And I wasn't here for all this, so I'm kind of trying to get caught up on what was going on. But I know there were some issues with how much that existing building could be demoed. And then when they ran into the unsuitable soils, they had to make that trench wider so they can dig down deeper to replace that. And that started encroaching on that existing building. So they were worried about it getting undermined. It just wasn't a good situation that everybody collectively decided let's just stop on that and deal with it when the school gets out and the building is down. What's the library going down? The library grids in, ceiling tiles in, lights are all in. Um, they're going to set the cabinets in there. There's a reception desk area. We're going to set those tomorrow. And then the uh, carpet guy might be in there by the end. He should be in there by the end of the week. When they're going to be ready to start resetting the uh, shelving and putting the books back in there and so forth. Um, it's all out of the high school right now. Yeah. I would say probably next Wednesday. <coughs> As soon as the carpet guy gets there, I would be able to get the And tomorrow the case looks torn in and the carpet follows it. And that's when you guys can start bringing your books in. But he wants to take that hallway because it goes into the library. So he wants to make sure that looks good when it goes down the hallway. And then as soon as he gets done with that, there's four or five classrooms you can be occupied and switch over there. So it's going to be probably a little bit busier for the last month of January to see the kids and teachers back into their final home. And then I think uh, we got dedication March 18th. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. I'm excited. So there's a quiz, the uh, picture that's up oh, there. Oh, yeah. The railing Sorry. beneath that. You know where that came from? I was really <laughs> that. I don't even know where it came from, so. That was actually in the old high school as you came out that main entrance there in the front. There was this rail. We took that and put it in the 87 way. It was it was there. And then we took here. That's the cool. uh, just the piece. This um, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's this house on the wall. This is all hardwood from Pike Lumber Company. 
they donated all of that. We have two of, two of those right there. There's this one and one uh, when you come in this entrance. It's off to the right, correct? No. no this, is, uh, uh, this is off to the up to the cafeteria. Where's the other one at? It's, up right, it's not on here because it's been up for. It's at the main office. It's at the main office. As soon as you walk in the main office, entry. Okay. So well, that's the one that's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Okay. And then we also have uh, the desk in the office. Looks a lot like that. Yeah. And, and the one in the media center. The media center looks like that. <coughs> so like, Mike Lumber donated uh, so a great deal of hard work. When are we going to be using that entry in unit B? Are we using that now as far as the buses come and go? When's that going to be? By the 26th. By the 26th, as yeah. far as the buses coming in and going out. That's when we'll have it done and you guys can use it. Um, I'm not sure how Chrissy wants to transition into making that adjustment. That's also the area that when middle school kids and high school kids come in the morning to wait for shovels, yeah. they'll wait right okay. there. Okay. And outside there's a very nice awning. Mm -hmm. um, big awning. Yeah, it's a big awning. So if the weather is warm, they can stand there and be out in the rain. But even that area, that space in between, mm -hmm. it's, it's oh, a sir. pretty big side of this side. So there's a couple benches that are going in there as well. Um, those will be here tomorrow as well. So we'll start to place together. Um, It looks nice. Yeah, it does. It's got that arcade floor in here. It's nice. It's really nice. Probably run faster, jump higher, not more. <laughs> Some people. Okay. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. You guys have a good night. <coughs> Straight to your pool, sir. I don't know rules business. All right, we'll move on to do business and uh, accept grant from Smith Strong Foundation. Right, uh, grant funds were awarded by the Smith Strong Foundation Fund. Uh, and those funds are used to provide support to the school corporation for an annual Smith Strong Award. And that award is presented to an outstanding student athlete at Tiffany Valley High School. And it's someone that closely exemplifies the values that Charlie and Scott Smith demonstrated daily in their lives. So we recently received that, and uh, we'd like the board to go ahead and approve that grant from the Smith Strong Foundation Fund. Gentlemen, do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion here. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. All in favor to accept the uh, grant from Smith Strong, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Number two, approve resolution to transfer appropriations. I'm not seeing it. Is there an attachment to that message? Well, at the end of each year, we transfer appropriations within funds uh, so that we don't end the year with any line items or classifications with a negative appropriation. Um, the transfers do not require the expenditure of any additional amounts of money other than what has been previously approved in our budget. Uh, the board authorization is granted through the approval um, of the resolution identifying the necessary transfers. So we're asking the board to adopt the resolution to transfer appropriations within the general fund budget. Do I have a motion to approve the transfer of appropriations? <coughs> I'll make the motion, Adam. Mayor makes that motion. I'll second that. Brian seconds that. All in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. I think that's all we have for you tonight. We'll go to our student representative, Dylan. Well, the school enjoyed their four-day break. <laughs> really nice. Um, basketball games are still going on, and uh, uh, baseball, track, and archery are having practices. Now, Dylan, there's a competition coming up here at Whitco. Is, yeah. Has that been held yet? No, it's the 22nd. Okay. It's on the Sunday, 21st or 22nd. Okay, so it's coming up here soon. Mm -hmm. Are we prepared and ready to go? I know you're an archer. 
Yeah, yeah. so my so <laughs> two hour delays have been hurting us because we don't get practice in the morning. That's all we've got. I guess uh, this meeting is adjourned. We'll move on to our order of finance meeting.